Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Cooking with Mr. International. I'm your host Harris Pianobo and today we're going to be making chicken rice flour noodle soup called Kopiak Sen. This is a very popular dish within the Lao, Mong, Mian and Vietnamese culture. In Vietnamese, this is called Ban Can. You feel alive, let's hit the dance floor. Don't work too hard, my break a backbone. Return to the Mac, the king is back though. Corvette and cash, I never like those. She saw the stone, you know how that go. Fatality, my diamonds that cold. Versace trunks, I hit my backstroke. Knock on the door. She at the back, bro. All I really take is a little taste. I like girl blue eyes with a little bass. Here for the thrill, I don't need a chase, sir. Wanna vibe it to get away. Shimmy, shimmy, y'all got the semi four way. Don't step out the line like this, a probate. You hit the line and try to locate. This for the time, got time for no day. Hey, what's up, guys? Let's get started. We're gonna add water to a pot and we're gonna bring this to a boil. Throughout this cooking process, you'll notice the soup broth evaporating. Be sure to add some water to the pot as you go. Next, add a dash of sea salt or salt to the pot. This is lemongrass. For those who never had this, the flavors are citrusy and has a hint of ginger. It has a little bit of like a floral note, kind of like lemony scent. You can find this at the Asian supermarket. To use the lemongrass, we're going to get rid of the outer shells. To do this, you're going to cut the bottom portion of the lemongrass, separate and remove the outer layers. Once removed, you're going to see a fresh and cleaner looking lemongrass. Wow, look at that. Next, using a pesto or a tenderizer, you're going to bruise the end of the lemongrass. This is going to help release its natural flavors. Once complete, tie this into a knot or you can use a string to tie them together. Once complete, go ahead and add your lemongrass to the pot. Next, add thinly sliced ginger. For those who are new to ginger, it is so good for you. It helps your body fight off so much germs. It has a little bit of spice and sweet and flavors. Next, you will be needing whole chicken. If you don't have whole chicken, you can do a combination of chicken thighs and chicken breast. Add your chicken to the pot. I am using free range today. Cooking time is going to vary from one to two hours depending how big your chicken is. And another note, if you're using whole chicken, be sure to remove whatever packaging that may be in the cavity. Next, season the broth with some fish sauce, chicken bouillon, and MSG. For your convenience, I'll have all the measurements in the description. While we let this cook, let's make our noodles. Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make kopiak sen, which is tapioca rice flour noodles. This is going to be really easy to make. You're going to need four to five cups of hot water. The water is going to make the difference because if it don't, sometime it will get soggy. I'm going to be teaching you a little bit tips and tricks because this can easily go sideways. The important key is the water has to be piping hot. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the ingredients that we're going to be needing today. Now you can find these ingredients at the Asian supermarket. If not, you can check on Amazon. Sometime is overly priced. Do your research, go to Yelp and see if there's a local Asian supermarket around. If you don't have time, you always can buy the store-bought one. It's called ban gan noodles. With that being said, I'm gonna show you what you're gonna need. Here's what you're gonna need. A bag of rice flour, a bag of tapioca starch, and optional glutinous rice flour. It's gonna make it where it becomes more chewy and bouncy. Something to serve with, your knife, and a, a working surface so you can roll your dough. A rolling pin, and an extra rice flour so you can dust. So this way the noodles don't stick together. And of course, a bowl or a mixing bowl, okay? All right, let's get started. We're gonna mix everything here in this bowl. Start off with one bag of the rice flour. You don't wanna make too much. You can cut the ingredients in half. And just a little bit, a dash. You want it more chewy, then to add more. All right, let's mix everything together. If you have a glove, you want to wear something to protect your hand because it could get really hot. This will make it easier for you to knead the dough. You can hear the background. I'm boiling my water. In order to make this, water has to be piping hot. If you can, invest in getting a kettle so it makes it your life easier. we will be needing four to five cups of hot water. So I have everything stirred in already. So in my kettle is a piping hot water. I have five cups here, so one liter, okay? It really depends. It's like a hit and miss because sometimes you don't do it fast enough. You might need more hot water, okay? I'm just gonna put in three to four cups first and then the remainder. All right, so you're just gonna pour it in. And then you wanna stir. Some people, they, they pour this in all at once. I like to do little by little. Just make sure the water stays really hot. 
So I have about like a three and a half to four cups right now. Once you stir and combine everything well, go ahead and add in another half a cup. Reserve the remaining half a cup for any room or mistakes that may occur. She looks something like this. It's really hot, so be careful. Use some sort of spatula. Stirring it, it should be cooling down. I'm just gonna try to touch it to see if I'm able to knead this because it might be too hot. If you guys haven't subscribed to my channel yet, consider subscribing. So I'm feeling it, ooh, it's piping hot. So I'm gonna let it cool down just a little bit. It is way too hot. Without the gloves, it's probably even worse. So the tip and trick is if it gets too brittle where it's gonna break, it should be more soft like this. But if it's too like hard and brittle, then add more hot water. Just not too much. But if it gets too mushy, then go ahead and add more rice flour. Let's see if it cool down a little bit. Okay. So this I probably can do. So now I'm starting eating it. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. About four and a half cups, okay? But I have extra just in case. Sometime I have to use five cups. So I'm gonna take it out now from the mixing bowl. And I'm gonna need it some more. So right here. It cooled down a lot, so now I can use my hands. My hands are clean, I washed them. Use so your knuckles, push in the side, hold it in, knead it like this. Now it's becoming more like a play-doh. So this is when it's really good because they're all mixed in. You don't want to do it too much because you don't want it to dry out. So I'm going to roll it into a ball now. Shape it into a ball. Alright, let's make Kopiaksen noodles. Alright, now I have this, we're gonna cut it into fours. And now at this point, go ahead and dust a bag of flour. With an extra bag of rice flour, dust your working surface. This is gonna prevent the dough from sticking together. This is messy, so have fun cleaning later. <laughs> All right. Now, when I cut it into fours. And then go ahead and dust it because the edges are going to be sticky. So now we're gonna put this back in the mixing bowl so that's the way it doesn't dry out. And you're gonna set these back in here so that's when it doesn't dry out. You're gonna place a cling wrap or a saran wrap or a damp cloth if you have it. All right, with your rolling pin, you're gonna roll this out. Dust your rolling pin to prevent it from sticking to the dough. Once complete, you're gonna start rolling out your dough. The longer you roll out your dough, the thinner the noodles will be. So this is gonna be based on preference. If you want your noodles to be really thin, be sure to roll it out horizontally as well.
So you, you roll it out more, it gets thinner, okay? So. So you roll it outwards, determine how thick or thin you want it, okay? So you get sheets like this. Once complete, it's gonna look something like this. Wow, look at that. Next, we're gonna cut this to our desired Kaupiak Sen Bankan noodle strands. Before working with this, we're gonna have to dust it on all sides once again. Once complete, using a knife, cut it down in the middle and stack them on top of each other. There are so many ways on how to cut Kaupiak Sen noodles, so here's one way. You stack them on top of each other, then roll it. Once complete, you're gonna cut the end of the rolls. This is gonna give you beautiful strands of Kaupiak Sen noodles. Each time you cut the ends, you're gonna have exposed dough and you're gonna have to dust the ends of this to prevent it from sticking onto the knife. Next, determine the width of your noodles. Cut them to your desired size. Once complete, gently toss your noodles. This is gonna help separate the noodle strands, followed by dusting them to prevent any sticking. Another technique is to stack all the dough sheets together, cut all the corners almost like a square. This way you can achieve beautiful strands of noodles. Wow, look at that. I prefer my Kopiak Sen noodles to be thick, almost udon-like, so I cut mine to be a little bit thicker. However, my fiance, she loves her Kopiak Sen noodles to be thin, so I cut it really thin for her. To prevent myself from being cut, I like to place my index finger and thumb and press this against the side portion of the knife. By doing this, it allows me to control the width and the size of my noodle strands. Once complete, place it in a tray or a bowl covered with saran wrap to prevent it from drying out. You can even put it in a freezer bag and freeze it and use it whenever you want. These are the thicker noodles, more like a udon style. These are the thinner ones. See? Like these, okay? But I'm gonna dust it some more. You don't want them to stick. So dust them like that, and then just move it freely like this. Thinner, more like a chicken noodle soup strands here, okay? These are thicker. Or these are longer, depending on what you like. There's that. Take a look at that. From using only one fourth of the dough, I was able to get these much noodles. This should be enough for two to three servings. However, if you're making this for a family, go ahead and finish with the other three doughs. Next, carefully remove the chicken from the pot. We're gonna let this rest while we work on prepping our veggies and herbs. For the veggies and herbs, this is totally up to you. For me, the more the merrier. This is gonna add layers and layers of flavors and textures and crunch. Today, I'll be using scallions, cilantro, lime wedges, and for a crunch, some bean sprouts. Chop or mince to your desired size. Whenever I get the chance to make kopiak sin, it always brings back childhood vibes. As a child, I would always beg my mom to make this. Whenever I go to baby showers, birthdays, or family gatherings, I always can expect to see a big pot of kapun or kopiak sin. Whenever I introduce my foreigner friends to kopiak sin, they become hooked instantly. Once your chicken has cooled down, separate them to your desired pieces either by hand or by using a fork. If you don't have time to make this from scratch, you could take shortcuts. Buy rotisserie chicken, separate them just like this. For the broth, you can buy store-bought chicken broth. And for the noodles, you can buy Vietnamese bankan noodles from the Asian supermarket. 
Once you have completed shredding the chicken, go ahead and reintroduce the chicken back into the pot. The next step is optional. This is how my family like to elevate the kopiak broth. We love a very garlicky broth. So what we like to do is make garlic oil for the chicken broth. To do this, you're simply gonna mince or chop your desired amount of garlic. Next, on high heat, add vegetable oil to pot or pan, followed by adding your minced garlic, frying this till golden brown. Once complete, quickly turn off the heat and pour this into the kopiak sin broth. And if you don't want this in the broth because you don't want it to be too oily, I totally get it. Just pour it in a separate bowl and this can be used as a condiment. Next, let's cook our kopiak noodles. Next, in a pot of water, bring it to a boil, followed by adding your kopiak noodles. You're gonna cook this until it floats up or when the noodles become translucent. Another method of cooking kopiak noodles is to cook it directly from its original pot. However, I don't like doing that because the broth becomes very murky and very thick. To assemble, place your kopiak sen noodles into a bowl, ladle your desired amount of broth and your desired amount of chicken. You can enjoy it by itself or you can dress it. Hey, what's up guys? Now I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna show you guys how I dress my kopiak sen. This is when it gets a little crazy because you can put anything in there. You can freestyle it. I'll show you what I have right here. Let's come a little bit closer. Right here is the fried garlic. Next, we have the dried chili pepper. This is the chili oil, some lime, and over here we have cilantro and scallions. So I'm gonna go ahead and add everything in. So I like to put extra fried garlic in mine. I love dry pepper, chili oil, maybe some lime white pepper, black pepper, scallions, top it off with that, cilantro. Now I'm gonna mix it in. I made the noodles thin and thick. Look how thick my noodles are. So I did a thick and thin one. Mmm. It's a little bit sticky because I added the glutinous rice to it, but look at that. Wow. I like mine a little bit more red. So everybody eats this differently, okay? Some people like to add sriracha, some hoisin, the gold seasoning sauce, but look it. These are fresh noodles, guys. Wow. Let me taste the broth. See if I need to adjust anything else. Mmm. So whenever you add pepper, it's gonna kill the flavor. So you gotta rebalance and remix it. So in order to maintain the spice, I can add more fish sauce. Of course not might be the healthiest, but definitely make it taste better. Look how red my bowl is. Mmm. Mmm, so good and comforting. Ah. Wow. Look at these noodles. They're chewy, bouncy. The broth just hangs on, and you have the chicken too, so who doesn't love chicken, right? Mmm. It's just so good. So if I could describe this, you've ever had chicken noodle soup, that's what it is, the chicken broth. Sometimes it's made with pork broth. And then the noodles is so, so similar to udon. Udon just made one with flour. Mmm. Taste of the chicken, the lemongrass, the ginger. This is perfect if you have a cold, it's perfect. Mm. I like mine so spicy like this. There's so much flavor with the gallon, the onions. So much flavor. Look at that. The noodle, you see the pepper flakes, the onion. There's so much flavor going on. Spicy umami delicious. I put a little bit of broth here and then the noodle. I figured I update all my recipes. Try it out, still tastes good.
This is Kopi Aksin. Wow. Look how red my broth is. Oh, my mouth is watering. Oh, it's my favorite. I'll take a bite of this first. Don't do it. Mmm, so spicy. Kopi Aksin is a rice flour, tapioca, arch noodle soup. Lao Mong and Mian, this is called Kopi In Vietnamese, this is called Ban Kan. Look at that, chicken feet. You go to the fast food store and you ask for chicken tenders, chicken fingers. Well, I have the real chicken fingers right here. I want to stay young. Look at that gelatinous stuff, full of collagen. I never had chicken feet. Describe it as like the skin of the chicken wings. Tastes like that. You scared to eat this? Give it to me. I like it. This collagen is going to make me look younger. Give me good skin. You don't want this with the balut, the kailut, give it to me, I'll eat it. Mm, so satisfying. You want to expand your palate, you don't want to miss out on good food. Give it a try, at least once. You only have one life. Who doesn't love chicken noodle soup, right? Oh, plastic. All right guys, I can't do it no more. My stomach's growling. So spicy. Oh my goodness. Spicy, one in my life. I'm dying, guys. Ooh, so bad, but so good for you. Just like everything in life, right? Yeah. Oh, spicy guys. <laughs> the chicken thigh is like dark meat. It's so very flavorful. Take your noodle soup. I made it with rice flour, tapioca starch. So if you like udon, Japanese udon is similar to it. Very close. Maybe one ingredient making it different. But if you like that, you'll like this. It's not as thick as udon. But you can make it like that. In Vietnamese, it's called ban gan. Look at that. I have a, the piece of the chicken there, the chicken thighs. I just eat really spicy. Oh my god, guys, look at that. Oh, drooling. My goodness, I made it so spicy. Look at that. My mouth is watering. So spicy. I, there's just so much going on in here. Look at that. The pork cakes. I used chicken thighs this time with pork. Giving that kind of like the, the broth of like hutil. Sap in Lao means delicious. So what I did was took sap and fantastic. Put it together, we have saptastic. And when you guys always see me wear saptastic, that's my new line of brand that's coming out. So stay tuned. You guys need the full tutorials on my YouTube, okay? I have full tutorials, a lot of recipes actually. Check it out if you guys can. Sous-titrage